The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host on a day where we've been a little bit down, a little bit up, and uh, what do we have to check right now? We're up one and a half points on the S&P cash, 1.86 billion shares. So just tinily above yesterday's volume, although we continue to see weakness in some sectors. And I wouldn't even call it strength. I would just say we're slightly higher in some others. Now, of course, the big news today other than that is probably the dollar. Uh, we talked about uh, that 96 30 area being super strong support and that we've had a dollar that probably was at least uh, they were trying to slow down the momentum in it. And I don't know if it's the Treasury or the Fed or a combination of both of them. But uh, as it got to 100 bucks, uh, really kind of pushed very hard on it to make sure that it didn't go through that 100 last time. Um, maybe it was traders, but it looked to me like a concerted effort by a variety of banks all over the world to slow it down. Uh, looks to me like it, it is uh, like a hit song headed to number one, like a rocket. And that rocket is at least to break through 100 this time. Uh, it looks to me like the move we have now at 99.04 certainly looks that's going to move through it. Of course, that's put a little bit of pressure on gold off nine bucks, silver's off uh, 28, 29 cents, platinum's off 11 bucks. Uh, but um, what it's not going to do is change the, what do they call that, the political narrative. Uh, there's always a narrative when you get involved with uh, the politics and, of course, the press. And they've got their preconceived notion, whatever it is. Uh, usually it has to do with me being a bad person uh, or any view that I espouse. Uh, but... I do digress with that. Uh, what I do think is that that narrative is that, well, you know, dollar hit a high, and now we're going to pull back a bit, and that would be it. Well, all we got was 96.30, and we didn't even get a crummy T-shirt either. So I don't know what else you can say about that. But uh, uh, the real movement here is, of course, into expiration, not into expiration a week, from tomorrow, but also uh, the real move is earnings next week's earnings, earnings, and more earnings. And, you know, we see some of these stocks, you know, it's going to be awful tough uh, to get the kind of earnings uh, move that a lot of uh, people have uh, continually put up uh, on these stocks. In fact, uh, Alcoa was out uh, last night and Everybody kept on telling everybody how it beat. Uh, what I couldn't understand was that it didn't hit any of the numbers that I was looking for. And I wasn't surprised that it was down. Uh, it, I think it was two cents better. But when you looked into the actual report, uh, there was some like one-time charges and other uh, dubious accounting issues. But the real thing was that they didn't hit the revenue number. And... Even if you hit your EPS, but you're light on the revs, they know maybe you just pushed a little bit of business into this quarter uh, instead of uh, leaving it into the next quarter. So maybe you just uh, cut the month off a couple more days later, and you still couldn't make uh, make the numbers on revenue. And, of course, uh, revenue is the first sign that things are having issues. Uh, Alcoa, of course, already uh, having uh, issues for the well, got up to you know, what it was 18 bucks and change and stuff. I had warned that the a lot of that huge move was on the belief that everybody was going to go to aluminum and building cars and that they were going to be selling so many F 150 Ford pickups that had aluminum that it didn't matter. And what we do find out is exactly what I talked about, and uh, I'll have to, I don't have it anymore. Uh, 
maybe maybe I'll have it soon. I had a little thing. I told you thusly, uh, as uh, uh, the uh, they say on uh, the Big Bang Theory. Uh, but as I told you thusly, I thought it was going to be awful hard to get them to point. I informed you thusly. Uh, well, where is that, Steve? Come on, Steve. Where's that? I informed you thusly. Drop. I needed it today. Uh, anyway, the whole thing is that uh, it was going to be hard to pay basically 10% higher for two, two and a half miles per gallon more uh, when gas had basically dropped a buck and a half or buck 75. And why sales are good for Ford, they've always been good. It's not like they took over the market with this thing. Uh, if gas was at four bucks, I could probably jump on the aluminum bandwagon. But it's awful tough. You can get a lot of extra equipment on a Dodge or a Chevy for three, three and a half grand. And uh, it looks at least like the preliminary numbers that that is true, that the numbers are good. It's a new truck. It looks good. Uh, so they're having the numbers. But the question is, what is the run rate going to be now uh, that the people that wanted the brand new truck have gotten it or most of them have gotten it? Same kind of question with Apple. As soon as everybody buys the iPhone 6, everybody's got to have it. You've got to have it now. Uh, but what's the run rate after the stampede of the people that uh, drink Apple Kool-Aid every single day? What happens then? And I think what we're seeing in aluminum is that, that, uh, you know, there are some great cars in aluminum. Uh, the Audi, I think the Audi TT is all aluminum. Um, great reasons to have it. Great idea very much more expensive. You have to worry about things like we talked about, dissimilar metals and corrosion. Um, I had a guy that uh, when I was living on a boat for six years, the guy next to me had an aluminum boat, and he was always running around chasing around uh, uh, corrosion problems on it. And in fact, uh, every summer they'd come through with a ultrasound machine and have a, uh, a diver in the, in the uh, uh, water, and he would go up and down the um, hull of the ship looking for pinholes in it. And it is, you know, you just have to know about what the materials you're working for. Not a bad deal, but there are going to be changes in that truck as the time comes along. But to me, the hysteria in aluminum um, came along probably with the hysteria in height in commodities. And when the reality that China had backed up all over uh, importing uh, iron and copper, uh, could aluminum have been far uh, behind? And the answer is no. Off four percent right now, thirteen bucks ten cents. I mean, it's off fifty seven cents. Not the end of the world, but it doesn't look to me like we've got any kind of V bottom in any of these commodities, including uh, the precious metals, that shiny yellow relic they call gold, the tarnished silver, tarnished about thirty cents so far today. Uh, I know we have a lot of people that are really uh, biting and chomping at the bit uh, for this stuff to go up higher. Uh, I was talking to somebody, uh, one of my subscribers, and I said, you know what? Gold has got about 125 bucks plus or minus in it, and I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, it could be either. And uh, I think we're, we're at this point, especially with low markets, or low volatility markets, is where you have a huge interday moves and huge move in gold. And that's what I'm looking for. And I'm not exactly sure which way it's going, but I think it's 125 bucks. And I think we got the first nine of that today. Um, could it bounce up 50 bucks tomorrow? Um, I don't have a good feel for it. I do know that conditions are right, though, for massive moves in gold and some of these other commodity uh, okay. Got uh, got some comments coming in over the transom uh, from uh, emails and some other stuff. Uh, okay, what else do we have going on out here? Uh, da -da -da -da. Nat Gas. Uh, Disco Dave, this is from Scott. Scott does not tell me where he's from, so I, I'm assuming he's uh, from uh, Mars. Uh, he says, what do you make of UNG and Boyle being at all-time lows? Well, if you love it here, it's probably going lower. Um, doesn't look to me like uh, natural gas has a lot uh, of uh, 
support until we get into the heights of uh, heavy and very heavy um, heat for electrical power generations. Um, and that would be it. Uh, uh, John from uh, Ipping, New Hampshire. How you doing today, John? Hey, how you doing? Fantastic. Uh, let's see. I had a question um, um, about your uh, the charting software you use. Uh huh. And also the uh, like data feed and the broker you use for order execution. Mm hmm. So I'm just trying to understand what uh, what experts are using these days. Well, for the timing of the trade charts, uh, we pay for a service to back the data up, and it. I, it's all end of day data, so it's not like a big deal out there. Um, and uh, the latest quote, I think, is what I think it comes from the uh, EC, uh, the ECNs. So it should be fairly close to uh, what time is, maybe ten or fifteen seconds behind. I don't spend a lot of time on uh, five minute or ten minute charts. I'm pretty much one of these people that uh, kind of. You know, if it's an hour, I may look at it and check on it, but I think it probably at the end of the day. Uh, my broker that I've used for a long time is Interactive Brokers. One of the reasons is that they have a programming interface uh, that is the same language that I've programmed in since 2000. So there may be reasons that I like it more than others, uh, but uh, I know other people like uh, other things, but I get a free data feed from them too. But uh, for the most part, um, we, uh, we have a, uh, one, one of the major data feeds out there, but it's not like a big deal. Pretty much everybody gets the same thing now. Okay. So you know, basically the, what I use almost all the time is the program I wrote myself, which is the timing of the, uh, uh, timing of the trade charts. The reason is I have a couple things that I do that I think a lot of people don't do, which is I'm basically looking for one of two things, uh, to start a trade and start stocking stocks that I like. And normally, why you hear me spend the last half of the show always looking at these stocks that just hit previous highs or previous lows. I want to find stocks that come in with, with basically volume at highs. It's about half of what it was previously for the possibility of a short and uh, about half the volume at lows for the preview uh, for the possibility of going long and that's where my all, all my trades pretty much set up i like to see some additional things like i wrote my power law vector indicator for seeing the energy uh into a lot of these and uh that's another reason does that answer everything you want to hang on uh, i think i'm all set thanks for your time i appreciate it you bet uh, t -t 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 that was John. Give us a call, 877-927-6648. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Mm -hmm. And as always, we like to get in a little bit of history when we start off the show. And I'm running late on that, but... Uh... That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Well, the earliest known discussion of securities and financial analysis was published in the London Flying Post. And they didn't even have airplanes in 1890, but they had a flying post. I wonder what that meant. Maybe they used pigeons or something. Anyway, several authors lay out their differing views on how to calculate the value of shares in the South Sea Company. In fact, I think that date's wrong. That's, that's got to be like 1720. Let me check this out. That's got to be wrong. Because the South Seas was like 1920, 25. Uh, let me make sure here. And I will change it on the fly. Uh, 1870, 1868, 1865. Yep. 1720. We'll make a change on the fly here. Do, do, do. There we go. Uh, of course, if you're not familiar with the South Sea Company, then you don't know your bubbles. And of course, uh, bubbles are everywhere. Certainly, they were in the South Sea Company. This was kind of the aftershock of the whole tulip bubble mania uh, just several years before. And uh, this led to no amount of hand-wringing uh, of uh, the early financial markets where everything was 
one con job after another. But uh, you want yourself to, to check out the South Seas Company and uh, read books about uh, that. In fact, my favorite book is the uh, A Short History of Financial Euphoria, where uh, uh, Stephen Galbraith, or Kenneth Galbraith, Kenneth Galbraith goes into this. It's only about 120, 100, yeah, there's only like 120 pages. Pretty short read, but uh, very excellent, concise uh, um, uh, insight into bubbles and how they come. And he starts with the tulip bubble and the South Seas bubble and all the bubbles that have come on uh, before. I think he, I think the book was written in 1993 or so. So it missed out, and I think he died after that. So he didn't get to the dot-com bubbles or the housing bubble or all the other bubbles that bubble, 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 bubble. But uh, on this day in 1720, um, the uh, beginnings of financial analysis started. And uh, I don't know if uh, any of those guys could figure out that the whole thing was a fraud. <laughs> So maybe this was the uh, first day that you could figure out uh, Enron, uh, at least uh, the thought of it out there. And we got a lot of stocks that are moving out here today, so let's get into it fairly quickly. We talked about Alcoa. Um, I'll bring up a chart of that in a minute. But uh, uh, some of these stocks that have just been hammered out here had such low expectations that even doing horribly, they ran higher with monster short interest. Pier One was one of those. Uh, they were expecting this thing to go to about five bucks, if you believe the short interest on it. Uh, got up to 1461 today, which is where this, uh, actually two, three, uh, yeah, three, f one, two, three major gaps all come together at this level, which is about 14 and a half bucks. Uh, it pulled back down to just a little over 14 here today, but, uh, uh, that's it. Uh, Andy Heck is uh, coming in, and he says he loves hate mail. Uh, so uh, you can look up uh, his email address on TFNN if you want. He apparently wants some more. Uh, to, uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, heavy volume uh, out here. And, of course, you're back up into this gap. But this gap came down with 36 million shares. Uh, even the 13 million we have today. Uh, is uh, not anywhere close uh, to enough to eat through this high. And again, it's one of these things that uh, is like uh, BlackBerry. And that is, it's not enough to kill you. And everybody's got 50% short interest on this thing. So you get these bounces out of these companies. But I think that there's a big problem with Pier 1 uh, and what they've done lately, I think that a lot of people have blamed them of changing the magic of Pier 1 and that you went in there and uh, were able to uh, discover things that you would have normally not looked at. And I know uh, my girlfriend likes to go in there and buy all kinds of crap that I have no idea. If she wouldn't have seen it, then she wouldn't have bought it. So I try to keep them out of those places because uh, that just means a whole lot more dusting. Thank you. We'll back, we'll look at a couple others. Of course, Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Bed, Bath, and Below. We'll be back in a minute, go through a lot of stocks. We're going to get into some of these Chinese stocks later. And uh, we're going to have a good time today. Give me a call, 877 The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now.
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And Bed Bath and Below. I'm not sure what's beyond Bed and Bath at that place. There's a door back there at the back. And uh, I think uh, Family Guy, uh, the uh, old, uh, one of the, what's the guy's name? Peter opened the door and fell through several time dimensions. And that's what's beyond back that back door in Bed Bath and Beyond. Of course, uh, you can get a lot of coupons there. And I think they kind of cut the coupons off for a while. Kind of did a little bit better for them. Um, and, uh, of course, it was down pretty tough. Um over well, into last summer, kind of rallied back up. They've made it better for a little while. My guess is this thing is in a kind of a bigger trading range from about 80 bucks down to that 55 level that we saw on June 26th last year. Down on volume today, you've got a low at $71.35 from January 16th. I suspect with the volume we've got here, it's only a buck 20, buck 30 lower uh, that we will continue seeing that out there and lower. As always, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. That's P-A-T-H, as in the path of least resistance, and we can look at it. Other than that, we're watching a market that uh, many are commenting in the Tiger's Den as uh, watching paint dry, not just any paint, not quick drying paint, but uh, that slow oil-based paint. And uh, eh, we're up a buck and a half on the S&P cash Two billion shares. So this is going to be yet another day where we uh, pushed up to um, 
pretty much around that 2088 level on the S&P cash and volume all died. Uh, it came back down. They tried to push it back up again. Volume dies. Um, I'm not exactly sure what everybody thinks out here, but uh, you got to keep a close eye on it. Watch the commodities. Um, if the commodities uh, start moving pretty heavily, that may be a good indication that uh, we're going to continue to have a very light and uh, uh, very tightly wound market that doesn't go anywhere fast. Uh, if uh, gold tends to start uh, getting some volatility in it, um, and uh, we start seeing the uh, movement in the indexes too, that would probably mean that we're out of the doldrums. If uh, you weren't a sailor, you didn't know that uh, about every 50, I think it's about every 15 degrees as you go down, there's a thing called the Coriolis effect that basically drives uh, the major wind patterns uh, one way, east or west, and as sailors would come down, they get where one started going west and one started going east to kind of a uh, rollover, and the air would just kind of spin there. And uh, it was uh, dead, it was hot, uh, there wasn't a wave on the ocean, and uh, it just took them forever to get through those doldrums, uh, two or three days, and then once again, they were through them. They'd have uh, good, uh, fast uh, trade winds to get going on. But uh, the whole idea was to try to keep uh, out of any of those uh, going over those areas or trying to make it as brief as possible. Maybe when a storm came through and uh, you could get through one of those areas without being hung out. It was not uncommon to see uh, sailors spend two or three weeks uh, coming to the new land. Uh, and two or three weeks were basically stuck in doldrums uh, in that Coriolis effect from the east and west trade winds. Um, but uh, that's certainly what we're looking at out here. Now, in Bed Bath & Beyond, we've got this low. Uh, I'm going to say that you've got probably a pretty good indication out here that 7135 is going to get broken. If you do, that means uh, the next level down is $62.16, uh, where you had a fairly good test of the bottom on, eh, what, 80% of volume, 83%, something like that. Um, and that goes back to that low of October 15th. So um, my guess is you're pretty much done on that. In the summertime, going to be light sailing anyway for these retailers. Uh, my guess is that the next opportunity to get on the bandwagon up on this would be uh, late summer. So probably stuck in the doldrums, the point of my whole story. Again, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. And I uh, just wanted to look at a lot of these uh, big movers that are moving the indexes uh, out in China. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. But, um, I mean, for ADRs on these things, um, pretty light. Uh, and the ones that are truly moving out here are really moving the indexes. Uh, for the Chinese stocks out here. Um, surprisingly, incredibly light uh, for the kind of volume. Uh, one of the ones is called Tan Tech. Uh, it's a recent IPO or ADR. This thing uh, is uh, got 24,000 shares today in the U.S. market, so not a whole lot there. If you want to find something that's uh, basically the Roman candle, and finally, some volume today is uh, Sinopec Shanghai Petrochemical Company, SHI. This thing has got a little doji out here hanging out here today. But uh, if you want to talk gappy little uh, stocks, certainly uh, this is one. And uh, what, since uh, when this thing started moving, um, what, on the 27th of March, uh, this thing was 34 bucks, and it got to 53.49 today on finally some volume. Uh, but these all tend to kind of look this way. Uh, doo -doo -doo. In PD, which is a big uh, chain drugstore, uh, I'm glad none of these translate very well. But uh, certainly that's what these are. But uh, this one is kind of interesting. A lot of these are like 2 and $1 stocks. It's amazing about how cheap a lot of the stocks are over in China um, and how they're kind of penny stocks in the ADRs. Um, China Nepstar Chain Drugstore Limited, NPD on this one, um, had a huge day today out here. But, you know, this these things travel and trade kind of like heartbeats. 
Um, and maybe you may not have a heartbeat if you trade this one too much because it's got some wild interday swings out here in the neighborhood of 80%. This certainly is and does look like the heyday of penny stocks circa 2000 in the NASDAQ. Uh, another one that you may want uh, to uh, familiarize yourself with is China Finance Online, the company JRJC. Uh, this one a little bit uh, more well-behaved, uh, may be able to give us a little bit better signal. But even this one had a huge move today and gave half of it back, filled a gap in about the same volume. But uh, talk about super chop, uh, choppy trading, uh, JRJC, which is China Finance Online and Company, uh, gap down with a huge gap down with 2.7 million shares on the 24th of uh, March and pretty much filled that gap today with 2.7 million shares so far, but uh, gave half of it back. So these things are giving you a little bit of idea of the wild, wild west in the China market. China HGS Real Estate Company. Uh, if anything is questionable, certainly it's real estate in China. Uh, this thing had a huge move today, but gave half of it back. Uh, this is HGSH. It had a big gap down with some decent volume, uh, 240,000 shares on the 6th of February. That set that gap up that came through and got uh, pretty much pierced today with uh, a little better volume, almost 300,000 shares so far today. But uh, again, ran through all those, ran all the stops and is right back into this lower trading range out here. G-U-R-E, uh, another one that's uh, been a big mover out here, but um, you know, this thing's been kind of going sideways, but you can see the kind of interday moves in these stocks. And uh, if you've been around since 1998 in the stock market, you will recognize these patterns as the dot-com uh, wild, wild west. DAQO, which is New Energy Corporation, DQ, not to be uh, confused with Dairy Queen or a blizzard, although I want, some, want one horribly. They've been advertising them on TV. Uh, I've been able to stay away from those. I'm trying to get back on my diet yet again. Uh, today, kind of an interday move out here in this one. CCSC is another one that's a big mover uh, in the Asian markets out here. Uh, country style cooking restaurant chain. And uh, all I can think of is uh, uh, when I go into the uh, country style buffet, or I used to, I don't think they have any down here. Uh, just the uh, people that probably should be signing up for um, one of the weight loss companies and aren't. Uh, but uh, maybe they're transferring that over to China. Who knows? Uh, this thing looked like it kind of set up some ABCs. Very light volume pop today. But uh, looking at that and the rest of that market is kind of interesting. Uh, Ponderosa. Uh, what else do they have around here? Um, Golden Buffet. Although I call it something else. <laughs> uh, when... Uh, I can't eat when I go in there. I, it's like seeing somebody that's legs been mangled. My leg starts to hurt. I go in there and see people that are absolutely should be at, under doctor's care, and I can't eat. So it doesn't do me any good to go to a Golden Corral because three-fourths of the people look like they're in severe pain from all the weight that they're carrying, and they're at an all-you-can-eat buffet, which is just worse. Um but uh, I digress. But country-style cooking restaurant chain. What's country-style cooking in China? Isn't it all the same? Huh. Maybe it's a good business. We could go into some really bad Chinese food jokes about uh, being hungry an hour after you eat there and you come right back. But uh, I don't think so. I'll avoid that easy joke today. Leave that uh, for others. Um, let's see if we have anything else going on out here. Okay. Uh, Dave, is it too early to look at sweet spot for options expiration? Well, um, I'm going to give you a big fat, uh, it's not too early to look at it. I'm going to tell you, you just don't want, uh, you're probably not going to want it or like it. And uh, that is that we have a market that doesn't have a real uh, good clue out here. What I can tell you is option market makers 
think that this market is going to go wide, uh, that we could be 10 points up or 10 points down um, by expiration. Uh, this is a market that no one has a real good clue on. Uh, the way you can tell that is this thing's a kind of a big bowl pattern if you're watching on Tiger TV. It's uh, not a nice V pattern out here. And not only do you see that, but as you get into the May op uh, options, uh, it's the exact same thing. Uh, they don't think it's going up in May. They don't think it's going down in May. That pretty much tells you that what we, I guess, know intuitively, that is right now everybody doesn't have a good fill. Is this market going to break out? Is it going to break down? Is it going left? Is it going right? Uh, option market makers basically have the belief that this thing could be uh, eight uh, SPY points up or down by the end of the the uh, uh, next week. And I think it's going to be, if you're going to have any play, it's probably going to be very difficult. That's why I said in gold, um, the thing could be up 125 bucks or down 125 bucks. Um, and equally... Um, you know, I would almost think that you need to be in spreads now if you were going to be in a lot of things. I'm looking at a few things that probably don't make typical sense that I think are good trades out there. But, uh, you know, uh, it is not an easy market uh, to figure out. And even the option market makers um, are basically dependent at whatever the uh, the point was yesterday and uh, are just hoping that uh, nothing happens for the next week. Uh, there's not a lot of, how can I say it, not a lot of conviction. If there was, this thing would be a nice V shape instead of this nice bowl shape. Uh, it's more of a bell curve, and that pretty much means that their um, bet right now is that, uh, like I said, that it will, will be uh, better than 198 on the spies and lower than... Uh, probably about uh, 215 and uh, maybe 214 on the very high side of this market. So we'd need something really, really to move this market. And I just don't see a lot other than earnings next week. Probably one of the reasons why they don't have a nice V shape. They don't have an idea how these earnings are going to turn out. And uh, so far, uh, we don't have it from them either. Um, I've got a sneeze, so hang on just a minute. And uh, that interruption was brought to you by our, our new sponsor, who will remain nameless. Anyway, we're up three points on the S&P cash. Uh, not a lot out here to really uh, uh, say anything about, truly. But uh, my guess is we're going to start seeing the uh, movement uh, of this market. And I think everybody, at least next week, is scared to death. Uh, that we're going to continue to see the kind of earnings we've had yesterday and today. Uh, after the break, we'll get into earnings for tonight. And uh, I don't think there's a lot really till Tuesday that's going to move this market. But Tuesday, Wednesday, look for a lot of action in the IBB because we're going to start seeing uh, pre-announcements and announcements for earnings in those biotechs. Uh, plus, a lot of these stocks uh, have uh, that are reporting early only got a little taste of the dollar change last time. Uh, they're going to have a, a mouth full of uh, strong dollars in this earnings cycle. We'll be back in a minute. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 5% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. 
Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the Taz Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As I said, there's not a lot that's going to be moving these markets anytime soon, but of course, uh, before the bell on Tuesday, we start warming things up. Probably the biggest one that's going to move out here is J and J. Uh, did I do it right? This thing has been. Well, I talk about uh, a, a ratchet down. Uh, this thing certainly has. Did have kind of a good sign um, that it got into its previous candle on March 11th with a little less than half the volume, uh, but volume increased on that test of the March 11th low and continues just to see this thing kind of ratchet on down. Um, you know, you need to have one more test where the volume actually gets less than 9.1 million shares. That could be a nice bottom to go look at out here. Uh, other stocks of interest, uh, Intel, of course, Intel down a little bit today because uh, the uh, deal that they were working, well, I guess it's up now, but uh, was it down a little earlier? because their deal with Altera 
uh, is falling apart, at least for the moment. Probably ought to comment on this one for a little bit, uh, especially for newer traders out here that are watching stocks like Altera and uh, Intel. And that is just because this deal fell apart now, uh, most likely it fell apart because of the pressure that this became public. And who knows about who uh, leaks this stuff? It becomes self-serving if Altera leaked it. Um, and my guess is somebody probably at Altera did. Once it got into the press, this becomes a giant football. Um, you know, two, three months down the line, uh, we're probably just going to hear an announcement. If Intel really wants to buy it, all they're going to do is wait until the pressure's off. It didn't do them any good to be bidding up the stock right now. Um, and that's what happens with a lot of these buyouts that come out in the press is that they uh, languish for a little while and then you see the movement. Well, maybe it's, yeah, it's back on again today. Boy, it got down to $38.67 on Altera. Maybe it's back on since I looked last five minutes. Um, who knows? Uh, it did hurt it this morning. It was down three or four bucks, and I haven't looked at it since then. Um, but uh, eh, a lot of that came back out here today. Maybe no one believes them when they say it's off. <laughs> like I said, it, uh, in two or three months, you normally see the same thing. Uh, which I, I think probably people are so rabid for any kind of price hike that they just ran the thing back up again. Maybe they don't believe Intel. Maybe they don't believe Altera. My guess is that this thing's probably going to uh, ratchet out, but maybe there's some news out here that I do not know. Anyway, Intel, of course, next uh, Tuesday after the bell. Uh, when we look uh, next week, into next week, another one that's going to be interesting is Netflix. Uh, in FLX on Wednesday after the bell. Now, this one uh, did not come back and really fill its gap. It touched it. My guess is that, that we're looking at this thing ratcheting back down to about 370 uh, before this thing would uh, be a technical buy or give you an opportunity to buy. It broke out with a sign of uh, volume, not of so much of strength, not a, a lot of inner day, uh, inner day candle on the 21st of January. But volume, uh, almost 10 million shares, got into it with 1.5 million shares. So you know this thing's going to bounce. But we're going to go into earnings out here. And I think, uh, I've talked about this for about two years, the accounting and the way that Netflix does accounting uh, basically has been writing off a lot of this stuff for a couple of years as they go into the future. Uh, we're pretty much now in the time where a lot of those early write-offs are going to have to uh, come and start developing higher levels uh, that Netflix needs to grow out of. Uh, we're also going to find out how well that they're doing internationally since uh, they started in Australia, I think just two or three weeks ago, but several other countries. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Channel 14 on Tiger TV, by the way. And hang on for Tom O'Brien and then Andrew Heck. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. You're watching.